Welcome back, Bulls Nation, to another episode of the Nothing But Bull Podcast. I'm your host, Derek, and as always, I'm here with my main man, Just B. Justin, what's going on? Nothing much, just another day above Dirk. And of course, Melissa, how's it going? What's up, everybody? Peace and blessings. Hope you guys are all doing great. And I'm going to start with Happy Halloween to everybody who celebrates it. You may hear some doorbells going off on the podcast, so... Just those trick or treaters, but yeah, uh, our our none of our predictions came true <laughs> because the Bulls didn't go three and zero. They did not go two and one. They went one and two. Uh, we did get that first win against Pacers, um, but the team played like their best game of the season because they pretty much ended up blowing the Pacers out which they should have, even with Miles Turner coming back. Um, what did you guys think about the Pacers game? I thought it was a very well-played game. I mean, coming in, the Pacers, even though their record was not very good, one and four, they were one of the higher-scoring teams in the uh, NBA uh, so far this season. Um Pacers have a good amount of talent that is young and they don't know what to do with it yet. I think that they have, they are a, a team that is very well coached, but um, you know, a lot of new parts, a lot of new faces, guys coming into different roles. So it was good to see them come out and just kind of put their stamp on the, the game right away. Um, it was very encouraging to see uh, P will, he looked like he was a lot more aggressive in that game. Um, yeah, just, you know, solid effort all around. It was good to see Zach back on the floor. Uh, Vooch was still, you know, fairly solid in that in that particular game. So I thought there were a lot of uh, good things to talk about um, in that game. But you knew. We had a solid game. It was, a, it was like a team game all around. Everybody put up. A- Solid numbers. We had uh, we had Zach with 28 points, six rebounds, five assists, a steal, Debo 17 points, Booch 14.7 rebounds. Um, I mean, everybody was on the board. Uh, Io, Pat, Wu, Wu with eight points, four rebounds, AC, eight points, two rebounds, three assists, three steals. Um, Kobe had six points. Kobe. Andre had uh, eight points, 13 rebounds. Um, one assist, one block. So um, it it was a great game. Everybody contributed. It was a blowout. Um, it was just great. Like there was, there was just high energy all around. Our bench went crazy. I think that is, that's something that's super promising and just really, I have a lot of confidence. Like we all have a lot of confidence in the bench. Um, bench has been consistent so far throughout the season, throughout our short season. So um we can definitely rely on the bench. I think it's like the second coming of bench mob. And everybody, everybody just comes in with that high intensity. So I was very happy with the game. It was a great game. How about that? Uh, how about that last play though? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's the type of you no know, game we need from the Bulls, like nightly, where everybody contributes. That's how this team can, you know, make some noise without having Lonzo and with Zach sitting out some games uh, due to that knee injury management. The, the next game was the Spurs, which it started off good because, you know, congrats to Debo for becoming the 50th player to hit 20,000 career points. He hit yeah, that mark. The Spurs in general for having a coach that knows when to take a timeout at an appropriate time. I don't think we know how that necessarily feels quite yet. So uh, thank you, Greg Popovich, for honoring Debo. 
Yeah, yeah, that was a great gesture. Pop called the timeout after Demar scored the twenty thousand, and you know, just let him soak in for a minute. But then, of course, Pop was Pop, and he coached his team hard, and you know, th- things went off the rail a little bit. Um, you know, Dr- Drummond was having a great game. Um, Vooch, Vooch wasn't really having a good game. Um, against the Spurs. Uh, I thought Billy should have left Drummond in because by that time that he took Drummond out for Vooch, Vooch had been sitting on the bench way too long and he came back in the game code. And I don't think he grabbed the rebound once he came back in the game. I think we could have won that game had Billy left Drummond in and just made some smarter calls. Now I'm trying to remember. This wasn't the game where um where Drummond like landed hard, was it? Yeah. Yeah, it was it. Because okay. that was my only thought. Like I was thinking the same thing. Because my broadcast got, you know, something was going on with the NBA app. I don't know what was going on with it, but um I do remember him landing hard, and I missed a little bit towards the end. But I was left wondering why he didn't leave Drummond in because you know he did have a hot hand. Um, it there wasn't really anybody who could guard Drummond while he was in there, and Drummond only played 23 minutes. When Vooch was in there, it was like he was less than non-existent. Uh, I don't know what his issue is with playing that center for the uh, Spurs, but that center always seems to give him trouble for some particular reason. I don't know why, and I have a hard time remembering even how to pronounce his name, even though that's not really relevant. But um. Yeah, like it was it was like evident from the beginning um, that Vooch wasn't he wasn't going to have a good game because Vooch does something that I feel that Kobe does. Like when he's not feeling it, you can kind of tell right away because he starts rushing his shot. Like there there were times in that game throughout where he was right at the basket. And instead of him just gathering himself for just like a quick second. He just seemed to be rushing everything, especially when he was close to the basket. And, um, yeah, I don't know if his mind wasn't in it. I don't know what was going on. I don't want to, you know, just put that out there without having any proof. But, um, yeah, I I also was thinking, why didn't they ride with Drummond, who had the hot hand? 17 points, 14 rebounds in 23 minutes. (laughs) And you take him out in the close game (laughs) Mm -hmm. where he was grabbing rebounds. He had 14 rebounds. And I do not, like I said, I don't think Vooch got another rebound once he came back in the game. I don't think so. Didn't do much of anything. And even Pat was doing okay. And uh, didn't play him. He didn't really get much playing time afterwards either. But yeah, I don't. I don't think anybody, anybody understood why, why we had Booch in there. Dre had a double double again, and we definitely could have utilized him. I, it, we just, we just got out coached too by Pop. Pop just does pop things, and he, he knows what he's doing. Of course, he's a fantastic coach. But those, uh, those adjustments again, and lack of adjustments by our coach, didn't do us so well this time around. Yeah, you can see throughout the game, um, Debo, you know, he started off very hot, but you could tell that with the adjustments that Pop was throwing at him, it's not that he was stopping Debo, but the the shot selection got tougher. Like you could see guys getting up in his space and they were making, you know, a lot of adjustments to try to at least either take the ball out of Debo's hands or just make it like highly difficult for him to to get those shots that are that we expect to be so common for him because it is common. But yeah, it was just a lack of adjustments. I mean, the only thing that I can say that was good is that when looking at this game, it's not a fluke that the bench is scoring as many points as they are. Like we have a definite, like a solid bench, now, better than solid. It might be arguably the best bench in the NBA, at least thus far. Um, and it's a bench that can put up at least 35 points uh, averaging close to like maybe even 15 rebounds a game. Um, but it, it, 
you know, I feel like these games, like we'll look back on them and wonder, well, why didn't the Bulls finish a little bit better? It's like these are those types of games that you you really feel like they should have won, especially when you're looking at Kobe. Kobe had an excellent game. It was like by far his best game in a in a year, I would say. Um, and not necessarily just with points, but just the way he was playing within himself. Uh, he was making good decisions. Kobe was was playing an excellent defense on guys, using his body a lot better. But, you know, this is just one of those games where I, I looked at everything that we had going for ourselves, and it's like, how did we lose this? Like, I, you know, three-point shooting from other teams is definitely an issue for this team. It's been an issue since the beginning, um, since after that Miami Heat game. But, um, yeah, it's like I look at this game, and I'm, I, I can't really pinpoint, like, if we had done this, then – we should have won. I just keep thinking we should have just won that game. Like it should have been a game that we won. We should have. And we, we had no perimeter defense at all. Yeah. They were just raining threes on us like ridiculously. And we couldn't, we couldn't shoot a three to save our lives. But yeah, some of it was bad. Like some of it was good defense where guys are just hitting shots right on guys with excellent defense. But a lot of it also was just like the adjustments, like, there weren't any adjustments so I don't like to like come down on Donovan and I think that I have kind of like you know given him his props before with our last podcast but this was one of those games where I was like how how did we lose this yeah I I told you last podcast I gave him congratulations for actually coaching one game (laughs) he he didn't coach this game (laughs) He he made no adjustments whatsoever. Um, Kobe had an excellent game. Why? Because Kobe was allowed to dribble. <laughs> he exactly. dribbled. He went to the lane. He got easy buckets. He was hitting from three because he could dribble that game. Um, I, I do think Donovan did like call a first play or something for Pat. And past been more aggressive, but late game adjustments, no. I think Billy, the last two games now, has called a challenge for calls that were kind of obvious that they were not going to overturn. And he could have used that challenge later in the game against uh, the Sixers, which might have helped out um because that game we were right there um and then you know they they called i think it was kobe for a foul on harden where harden just kind of like hooking his arm and can't challenge that because billy wasted that challenge already which was unsuccessful and it was no way they were going to overturn that when he used that challenge. Uh, I also don't think that last drive by DeMar where Joel B goes up, he was not vertical. He moved some. That was a foul. But, hey, last last too many reports that it wasn't. So, whatever. Uh, Caruso almost made that play with the steal at the end in the three. That, I think the UC would have went crazy had that dropped. I just know that the Sixers are public enemy number one. <laughs> I cannot stand Joel Embiid. After he he went and said all that and posted that? Yeah, it makes a post on Instagram of a picture from the game and saying, father and son time. Aaron Rodgers. It's like, dude, okay, you're, you're 12-0 in your career against the Bulls, mainly because when you entered the league, we were going through a rebuild. Wait, he's proud of that? Given, yeah, he's proud of that. <laughs> given, like, how poorly his teams have collapsed in the playoffs, like, that's what he's holding his hat on to, beating a Bulls team that was going through rebuilds? Like, like what are we celebrating here? Yeah, he put, his caption was Aaron Rodgers. And do you really want to, like, catch, like, 
you're using Aaron Rodgers right now to like be comparing your like is that what he was doing comparing himself to Aaron Rodgers? Comparing, yeah, yeah, Chicago's record against them. Okay, but it like has he seen how Aaron Rodgers has played this year? Like, I don't think that anybody would want to be comparing themselves to Aaron Rodgers. Like, I don't, I don't know what he's doing with that. Um, which is interesting. Like watching him literally cry himself off of the court as uh who was that jimmy no it wasn't jimmy it was um who was that that sent them uh was that the Kawhi leonard shot that sent them out of the that year <laughs> yeah. yeah so yeah i don't know what the deal is with that like i guess if you're celebrating that then whatever um but it's funny because like in that game i was pretty sure vooch outplayed him in that game yeah, he did. Like thoroughly. Like he he had a bad game against the Spurs, but he bounced right back against the Sixers. Um. Then you know we we didn't have IO because uh, in the Spurs game, hit his head on a one of the Spurs knees. He cleared concussion protocol, but had neck and back discomfort. Andre Drummond took that hard fall in the Spurs game, strained his shoulder. We didn't have him either. The Sixers would not have won that game if we had Andre Drummond. I'm not even going to mention Io, but if we had a backup center when Vooch went out, yeah, they they weren't winning that game. Yeah, wasn't Billy, like, saying that he was going to put Kobe on Embiid uh, just, you know, just as a joke? because they didn't have anybody else behind um, Drummond for that. Like, I don't know. Like, I look at this, it, another game that they should have won. Maybe, like, if Zach also comes down and passes the ball to the guy who's made, three, like, five three-pointers in a game at the end, if he makes that read, who knows? It's it's a different game. But when you're looking at these teams, these, like, supposed, like, you know, top-tier teams in the East, like, I don't see the Bulls being that farther away from them. Like you mentioned, if we have Drummond, if we have Io, if we have a healthy ball, um, if Zach is not still finding his way because he can't play on back-to-backs, like I don't feel like any of these teams are light years ahead of where the Bulls are at. Like, am I the only one? Like, I don't know. Like, We have the same record, too. Four three and four. Right. So for him to even, for him to even have the nerve to say to to make that post, <laughs> he does. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That Zach play. Uh. Zach said after the game he said no, I I should have passed it to Vooch. So I I appreciate Zach like taking ownership of that and also shows that he was watching the film and realized. He he made a the bad read right there because Bucha was open in the corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, passes him the ball. Who knows? That might have been game over for the Sixers. And then Joel wouldn't have made any Instagram posts that night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's still a learning process because you know this is this is not going to be, or at least it should not be okay it's Debo's turn and then it's Zach's turn. It's Debo's turn and then it's Zach's turn. Like the way this team is built now, it shouldn't be that. And it doesn't need to be that you have so many guys who are capable of making plays on this team. Uh, Guys who are capable of making plays for other people and guys who are capable of, you know, making shots. Um, And I think, you know, in the past with Levine, obviously there were some like, bad habits that I don't want to say like he got stuck into, but just as who, like the ma- the guy for the team, there were certain shots that he had to take, which is why like Zach is one of the best bad shot takers in the NBA. So he's had practice doing it because, you know, he's had to do it on a terrible Bulls team. But now as this team starts to really understand their identity and understand that there are multiple guys who can make plays that is going to be the next step for this team. It's just that trust factor. I think it's coming because, you know, it, it starts with 
you having one of your best players open up and say, hey, this guy was open and he's been hitting, you know, three pointers throughout the entire game. It, but it's it's just that trust factor. Like none of us expected. Well, I, I'm sure we expected like um, Io to take the jump that he's taken, but not necessarily to this point. So it's just a matter of trusting that everybody is upping their game. Javante is capable of hitting a shot and making a play and providing energy. So just, you know, trusting that process is just the next step for this team. Yeah, I, I don't think um, – I just don't think Zach saw him. Because you know, the way they were guarding DeMar, you probably thought, okay, they're doubling him every chance they get. I'm supposed to be a top guy on the team. I need to go and make a shot. I don't think he even saw a booch over in the corner. Possibly. And also, you know, it's not like their point guard was on the floor at that time. You know, the, the person who normally would be making that play or helping to get guys in position. So, again, it's just, you know, I think it's just a learning process. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Mel. No, 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 it's true. I, I think he's getting a, a little bit way too much criticism on uh, on the shot selection. I know it's, historically he's not known for having the best shot selection or uh, or also even having like a clutch gene. But um, I think, again, that also has to do with the team that he's been working with for, uh, for all these years. So I'm sure that's going to change. I'm sure that'll improve kind of like to your point, Justin, um, as he's adjusting to our the newer squad that we've had this past year, just being able to to understand everybody's strengths and so forth. I think I don't think he deserves as much criticism as he's getting. Um, you're, you're hearing a lot of the super negative fans again with the uh, the usual the max contract stuff, and it's pretty disappointing. But what are you gonna do? Yeah, I never understood that because like people people say whatever, like it's their money that's being spent. Like none of us are paying his salary. So, you know, who cares about the max? The only thing that I did, I was a little bit concerned with um, when guys get that money, it's like the added pressure that they put on themselves that they have to live up to something. No, no, you've already lived up to it. Okay. That's why you got the max. So, and you see that from a lot of players, like, there might be like that adjustment period in that first year of understanding that just because I'm the max guy does not mean that I have to be the max guy every single night. I can just be the guy who's making the right play. And, um, you know, we, we always put pressure on ourselves for different reasons. And I'm not saying that that's what Zach is doing, but that is something that I worried about coming into the year about, any pressure that he might feel to put on himself, which is, is, again, once these guys really start to get going, there's going to be more of that trust factor to understand that if you have a certain guy who has the hot hand, get it to him. And it's not just with, you know, in this particular play, it's just in general. You know, if there's a guy, like one of the things I appreciated was when Zach was, um, there was like a, a delivery between him and P. Will. And P. Will wasn't even expecting the basket to come his way. But Zach found him and, you know, it resulted in him getting like this this pretty cool dunk um, on one of the plays. I forget exactly what it was. But it's just, you know, having not only him feel like he's involved in the game, but getting other people involved. So it's just going to take some adjustments. But, you know, that those adjustments will come in time. And we kind of talked about that, too, with like – a few a few episodes back just knowing that it was going to be so easy for him to become the villain so he's going to be scrutinized for everything he does doesn't do just because he got the max contract so it's so easy for for the fans in quotes or not in quotes fans um to turn on him because he got the max contract so just uh, keep that same energy when he proves proves you guys all wrong but remember he also outplayed he's outplayed his contract prior to like nobody expected him to play as he played for what he was getting paid for. So I think, I think he'll do it again. I, we just, the only thing he really, the, the main thing we just want to see from him a little bit more is just the effort on defense, but. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, and he gave great effort in that Philadelphia game. Like there was a couple of plays where he just shut Harden down, mm-hmm. and it's it's funny because when you listen to players talk, you know one of the things that um. I think it was Larry Bird or some one of the former players. They were like, you know, the same type of of talent that makes you a great offensive player is the same talent that you use on defense as well. Uh, and once guys realize that, then like they'll take off. And um, Zach has it in him; like he's athletic enough to guard a lot of different players. It's just a matter of, you know, putting in that that time, that effort, and that consistency which I'm sure he'll get to. I mean, there's no reason to doubt that he won't. But it is interesting hearing these people who were like are calling him out because they were the same people who weren't fans of him in the first place being on this team. And he's already proven them wrong, like you brought out, Melissa. So, you know, it is what it is. People are going to talk. And it could be, too, just because uh, just because he's also – maybe he's just trying to play it safe also with the me since we've got this load management stuff going on. He, we do need him – we do need his offense a bit more than the defense, but we shall see. We have seen some flashes though of improved defense for sure. Yeah, those fans that are <laughs> complaining about, oh, you you paying him the max and he can barely play. Okay, this guy had surgery five months ago in the off season. Mm-hmm. Didn't play any five on five until training camp. Uh, he's being set out right now for back to backs because the Bulls want to preserve his knee and his health so they can make a deep playoff run. You got a guy like Kawhi Leonard who missed all of last season and he just missed like their last three games because of injury management. He didn't have surgery in the off season. He had a full training camp, could work out, do whatever he wanted to do, play five on five during the off season. He missed three straight games because of injury management because teams are not trying to let their investment go out there and get hurt again so I don't understand how people are pushing back on Zach for sitting out of the back-to-backs which we have a ton of because who made this schedule we have a back-to-back this week we play tomorrow and Wednesday We've already had, what, four sets of back-to-backs already? <laughs> A that... Nick fan made the schedule. That's who. <laughs> it, like, it, it, it had to be a Nick fan. <laughs> Why are we playing so many games already? It's like... It is dirty with the schedule. It's like somebody knew they were going to sit Zach out back-to-backs, and they were like... Let's schedule them for all these back to back so we can, our analysts can be right and this can be a, a playing team and they can be ninth place in the East. It's still not going to happen. Because... Wasn't there like a schedule before, like where the circus came to town or something like that? The circus trip, where it's like a long road trip. Yeah, this is much worse. <laughs> <laughs> It is. <laughs> they hate us. I, I I just don't understand it. Like, why? Why? And I know somebody said it's because uh, we get a few games off in January because of the Paris game. And I'm like, the MGA wanted us to go to Paris. We didn't ask to go to Paris. So why are we being disrewarded for doing something for the NBA? Well, we'll put it like this. We're Bulls fans. We love watching them play. And we don't want to watch them back to back. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't, I don't get the schedule. I just don't. It's crazy. Um <laughs> I don't know, man. I I know one good thing that I've seen from these last three games is P. Will has looked a lot more aggressive. Mm -hmm. Um, And it started with the Pacer game. He did not get the career high (laughs) because 
Billy didn't play him that many minutes, but his time on the court, he was aggressive. And you know, during that game, shout out to the big homie Stacey King because he mentioned our podcast and the interview we had with Ed and him challenging Pat to be aggressive. So, yeah, shout out to the big homie. Um, you no, know, people don't know why I refer to him as big homie in the hood. That's how you show respect to the OG. So, shout out Stacey King for that one. Shout out. But yeah, Pat has looked more aggressive each game, beginning with that one where you know Ed challenged him to get a career high. I'm not going to hold him not getting one against him because I think Billy only gave him like 15 minutes that night, even though he was being aggressive in a blowout. Again, it's one of those things. Well, I mean, I'll put it like this. It has been great to see Pat playing aggressive. However, has he done anything to warrant him either one being in the starting lineup or two getting more minutes as of yet? I don't even care if I don't even want him in the starting lineup, to be honest. Not yet, but I do think he should definitely have more minutes if he's like in flow. Like if he's feeling it and he's in flow and we actually are seeing some confidence from him. Absolutely, he should be playing more. I not a not a starter yet. I'm yeah. gonna take him off the bench, but he should definitely be playing more minutes when when you see him and you see he's in flow. Like it, it seems like a confident is, confidence issue to begin with, and he's starting to gain a little confidence. And it's what we've all been dying to see and what we've been asking for, and we see it, and then he doesn't get the minutes. Like when we're seeing him doing what we want him to do. So yeah, he, I think. I definitely think he should be playing more minutes as uh, as these games have been going on. He's been he's been a uh, he's been having more confidence and he just gets set. Well, like is it one of those things where like you know how like a performer or like a comedian like when they hit that that high note or you know they've got the audience it's just like okay it's time to get off stage like cuz I can't do anything else but go downhill from there. Like I, I'm all for him like getting more minutes if he's if he's playing well, but also I I tend to be a little bit more measured in thinking okay he's got his confidence up let's just have it transfer over over to the next game and just give him a little bit more minutes because like if he's I I tend to think if he doesn't play well after that then he might go into a shell. That's all I'm thinking that possibly Billy might be thinking. It's like, okay, let's just take these great minutes that you had and like we'll just move on to the next game and hope you know you continue and then start getting more minutes for you. But um, definitely I don't think that he should be a starter. And part, one of the reasons why I don't think he should be a starter is because the energy is so low with that first group. It's like people are still trying to like, not step on anybody's toes as opposed to just reacting. Like every single time I see Javante come into that game, Javante doesn't defer to anybody. <laughs> if there's a rebound to be had, he's going to get it. If there's somebody that he needs to guard, he's going to guard him. If he needs to deflect passes from somebody, which he's like one of the, like the top reserve and deflected top. passes for will's uh will's report actually I, I actually wanted to talk about that he's he has 31 deflections in the least amount of minutes 124 minutes on this like list of the top 10 31 deflections in 124 minutes five screen assists and 20 points off those screen assists Dude, that's crazy 10 points my bad 10 points that's crazy and like i thought that um also caruso was on that list too he's second Okay. He's second, see. Second at twenty-eight deflections, nine screen assists, and twenty-two screen assist points. See, my thing is, is Caruso knows what to do when he gets into that game. Just be a dog with whatever. Um, I don't see why Javante does not get more minutes. I have been fighting it to begin with, saying that we need to get P. Will, you know, used to starting. But like, it's kind of hard to hold a guy like Javante back, like especially when we see that the energy level of the team is not quite there and it's been showing 
Their first quarter stats are terrible. Then you go into the second and the third quarter, and they are performing a lot better. Part of that being the bench coming in and everybody's knowing their role off of the bench. And then in that fourth quarter, it goes back to being a little bit terrible again. So if we could like find some way to flip-flop that by possibly inserting Javante in, I think that's something that they need to consider. Yeah, it's our starts and finish. Our starts and our finishes. Like we're always scrambling. We're, we are off to these slow starts and then we're cool in the middle and then we start scrambling again in the fourth quarter. We're like 30th, 30th on defense in the first quarter and then 30th on offense in the fourth quarter. That's not acceptable. It's like when you think about a movie, you don't remember necessarily everything that happened in the middle part. You remember the great beginning and then some stuff happens and then it sets you up for this amazing ending that you didn't see coming or that you were expecting to come and it was like going to be spectacular. Like that's what we need to have with this Bulls team because like you can't just have, oh, we're good in the middle parts and then we we suck at the beginning and we suck at the end. Like that's just not going to work. That's not playing winning basketball. Yeah, um, Billy said, you know, he would look at the group to, you know, start games, maybe have to make some adjustments. I've said it since our second preseason game, which Javante started that game, that he needed to be the starter instead of Pete Will because of the energy that he brings. Mm -hmm. If I can see that during the second preseason game, why is it taking Billy the seventh regular season game to see what I've already saw? I cannot stand Billy Donovan. <laughs> he is a horrible, horrible coach when it comes to X's and O's. Great player coach, sure. You you just can't be the nice guy all the time to appease your players. You have to actually call plays that are going to work because if he calls three plays an entire game, he's done too much. That's, that's too much for him to do. It's three. We run three plays a game. Run some plays. Learn when to call the timeout. Do not let them cut the entire lead down before you call a timeout. Once they get it to maybe six or four, you want to call the timeout to stop that momentum while you still have the lead. He's just, oh, nope, not going to call the timeout. I'm I'm reading Discord. People are like, call the timeout. I said, no, he's going to wait till they score again first, and then he's going to call the timeout. And that's exactly what happens because why, Billy? Why? Learn when to use challenges now because <laughs> sometimes you, you don't even use them. You have them, you don't use it. Then when you use it, you, you used it in the second quarter of the game. <laughs> on a, a play that was not going to be overturned. We needed it in the fourth quarter. We didn't have it. And of course, you losing the challenge also loses us a timeout, which you wouldn't have called in the right place in the first place. I, I, I truly think that this team needs a different coach, one who knows how to call plays. When you maybe Chris Fleming, because when he took over when Donovan was out last season with COVID, he went five and zero, oh, and he actually called plays. Like, can an assistant coach not say, "Hey, Billy, you might want to run this"? Like, give him some suggestions. I mean, it's on Billy if he uses it or not, but at least suggest, like, hey, Billy, uh, look at this play. <laughs> we could use this. So uh, we, we've already uh, lost the prospect of Ben Gordon coming on the show. So now uh, Billy Dobbin is added to that list, too. I thought you were going to edit that out, too, and I rewatched the episode, and I'm like, no, I'm not editing that out. You left that in. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel, Derek. <laughs> I mean, dude, run some screens with Pat and DeMar. Forward, forward screens. The, there's some trick-or-treaters. Trick -or -treat. 
The Spurs ran forward, forward screens in that game against us, and Keldon Johnson was getting free because of that, and he was a problem because we could not contain him. Mm-hmm. Keldon Johnson, I think he put up 30. Yeah, I don't know how we run pick and rolls for um, Derek Jones, but we don't do it for P. Will. Like, it doesn't. Like how like Derek Jones like what six foot five and like looks like he we- weighs like a buck ninety, mm. um, but we don't do it for the guy who's six foot eight, weighs close to two twenty, has a six eleven <laughs> wingspan. Like it's kind of, it is pretty interesting. But but how do we put the the dog in him gauge though? Well, he had that dog in him when he dunked on the guy the other night. Yeah, that is true. That's, that's why he's got. He's just got to stay in flow. Like, let him play a little bit more. I just don't understand. Like, well, it does make you wonder. Does anybody else on that coaching staff like say these things to Billy? Because I never see any type of interchange of anything. And I'm watching. I'm literally like looking at the bench every single play that I can waiting for Billy to like say something. Cause I, like we talked about this before years ago, Derek, like how like there are times where I feel like Billy needs to get a tech. Like he needs to get a tech there to protect his players, like ride the refs, like do something to put your stamp on the game. You see other coaches doing it all the time who are successful with getting calls for his players we don't get calls for our players. We have started getting calls lately more than we normally do. But on the, on the real, like we don't usually get the kind of calls that we're supposed to. And it goes back to Billy kind of putting that in the ref's mind that you need to be looking out for this, or you're going to hear it from me throughout the game. He doesn't do that. And then like, as far as the adjustments also, like we talked about that and just like, the overall flow of the game like where are the adjustments coming from so I don't want to say that he needs to be fired necessarily but it does make me wonder do the other coaches on that staff have his ear to be like hey Billy look at this that's going on like this is something that we can do I never see that on the sideline. Nope, all you ever just see is Billy chewing gum that Mm -hmm. has no flavor because he's chewing the hell out of it. It was that that one game against the Heat, the 19th, you remember? It was that one game where he actually got mad, and we're like, for once, he's not just chewing his gum aggressively. He got mad, and that's where we're like, okay, there's some hope. No. Other than that? Billy, (laughs) call the refs out in the postgame. Take the fine. Mm Mm-hmm. You got to do this sometimes. You make enough money, take the fine. (laughs) It's funny, like, people, when they look at, like, a coach like Steve Kerr, like, people, like, kind of just assume that Steve is, like, unassuming and that he doesn't get on refs or he doesn't call out players. But when you look at that sideline, like, I remember, like, three or four years ago, he took his tablet and he, like, just smashed it. He was so ticked off at his players and the refs. He was, like, just fed up. I've seen him call guys out before. You never see that with Billy. I'm not going to go over X's and O's because I don't know a a whole bunch about X's and O's, but I'm talking about just that general, like, energy. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why this team starts out the way that they do because of the lack of energy from him. I don't know. You know, I'm just kind of, like, just thinking out loud. But it is interesting that a coach who does not have a demonstrative personality and doesn't show that energy on the sideline has a team that also goes through spells where they don't show energy at the beginning of the game and at the ending of the game. And I'm not saying that there's causation there, but it is something that should be considered at the very least. Yeah, we've talked about that before like well I think it was uh was it on Big Dave's episode I was asking 
what, what you guys thought about Billy as a coach, like, does he fit with our team? Like, he's definitely a player's coach. Of course, everybody loves him. Like, I think Zach said we, that he, he, that's his favorite coach of all time, I think. I know they're really tight, but he just, it just, in, K, in uh, Stacy's words, KYP, got to know your personnel, right? Like, it, yep. it obviously does not work with the team that we have. Like, our, our starters, they need somebody they need Billy to be on their butts. Like we can't be off to these slow starts They're They, we cannot be off to these slow starts. It's, it's like, again, we're always playing catch up towards them. Like we, we have these good second and third quarters and we gain all this confidence and then it, it just dips off again in the fourth. And we are relying on Debo, like King of the fourth. So yeah, I just, we need to see him being, we need to see Billy being more aggressive and holding his players accountable. And this is the same thing we've been talking about. Like we, he had that one good game against the heat where he was coaching and making these adjustments, um, holding his people accountable when they weren't making their plays and seeing where there were mismatches and, and subbing accordingly. But I don't know. It was just that one good game. <laughs> that one good yeah, game. Yeah, it's pretty interesting when you look back and you think about, like, Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson had the best player on the planet, Dog. He has Scotty Pippen. Dog. Like, all of those guys were dogs. And there were numerous times at the beginning of games, two minutes in, oh, like, the energy. He doesn't like the energy? Call the timeout. You know, you see him get that light. Now, I, I wasn't, like, I didn't, of course, we didn't have what we have now where we can see more of the play, but, like, they would go to commercial, and you just see – Phil just looking at people like this like you know what what is going on the zen master the guy who everybody thinks was like you know just always like in a positive mood like there are times I'm sure that he called players out or stopped or did something to get their attention to say this is not acceptable the way you are starting the game let's change our focus and get the energy going and again I'm not going to call out him on X's and O's, but like energy wise, there's a reason why they're starting off slow and there's a reason why they're ending slow. And that's that's just coaching right there. Yeah. Um, if you've never heard uh Stacy's Phil Jackson story <laughs> where Stacy is guarding Larry Bird and he he's at that like Bird's got the ball and he's at the hash mark. And he says Phil's on the sideline screaming, get up on him. <laughs> and Stacy's like, he's all the way out here. He's not going to shoot. Get up on him. <laughs> and Larry Bird's like, you know he's going to pull you out when I make this. <laughs> and Stacy's like, whatever, take the shot. Larry Bird shoots, drains it. Time out at the next whistle. Larry's like, you know this for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Phil was not afraid to get on people. Like, even during the play, he's yelling at you to do yep. something. We all know Tibbs did that because you could hear him mm -hmm. on the screen. Ice! Ice! <laughs> like, you see his face turning red, veins <laughs> popping out of his forehead. But we need that energy. Yes. We need it. It is so needed. Hold your just people accountable. Up. Give them some motivation. It's not all on the coach, but a lot of it is on the coach. <laughs> the you would think on a team that had some high energy, like caliber players, you, Tibbs was always calling people out. Maybe to a point where it, you know, started to grate on some people's nerves. I don't care. I would rather your nerves be upset and you are going out competing like a hundred and ten percent as opposed to you're just starting out at like 80% and then you try to kick it into gear when everything is going wrong, then all of a sudden you know how to play basketball. Like that's what we see from this Bulls team that has a lot more talent on it than it has had in a very long time. There are teams that just come in, and this was something that I we talked about years ago as far as teams that were – not as talented, but just had that hustle in them, had that dog in them that Mel was alluding to. And, um, you know, I would like to see the Bulls develop that same mentality. 
that was a problem for this team with other coaches as well before um, Donovan. Just getting out hustled or, you know, a team comes out and kicks you in the face. How are you going to respond? Now, the thing is, we have seen them respond a lot better to being down. And that is something that we, we you know, you can't just like not give Billy any type of credit. Because in years past, when Boston would hit us hard like that in the beginning, or any uh, any team by that matter, it was just pack up and fold it in. And, you know, it's time for us to go trick or treating like it's Halloween or something like that. But, you know, um, I'll give Billy that kind of credit right now, but it needs to be something that is continuous throughout a game. That credit goes to the bench. This yes, <laughs> like it's not. It's it's the bench when they I tried get, Billy when the, when the starters got kicked in the face. It was the bench that brought us back. Not sorry, Billy, but not Billy. If you ever see this, you may not. But it's it was it's our bench. Our bench comes with all the energy and the intensity and the urgency. Like we gotta we we come with a fight. <laughs> I, I'm not apologizing to Billy <laughs> because. <laughs> Like, come on, man. Your your whole strategy of getting us back in the game is I'm going to chew my gum. We're going to get down. And then I'm going to put in this bench lineup who is our defensive lineup and hope that we get back. I could do that. I could just sit there with a pack of spearmen and be like, okay, we're getting down. Defense, defense, go on up, go on out there. And just wait and see. And then it's like, okay, uh, we're close. It's the fourth quarter. DeMar, go do your thing. That's all he does. They're like, like I said, how are you not calling pick and rolls between Pat and DeMar or Pat and Zach? Because if they switch, it's a mismatch either way because you got Demar who can pull up and make contested mid range shots. You've got Pat who's athletic enough to drive to the basket, shoot a mid range. Zach can shoot from anywhere on the floor. Why are we not running enough pick and rolls, which is the most used play in the NBA? They run it with um, Vooch. Like, they will go and do that pick and roll with Vooch, and there will be opportunities for mismatches. I would, like you say, just I prefer to get our major athletes get, getting to the rim easily. And there is just – there's easier ways to do that than what we see that is going on with this team presently. Um and again, like uh, you know, I hope it's not a situation where it's one thing that the front office, you know, they brought Billy in, handpicked them, and so that's their guy for one. And two, they think about just how bad things were before he got there. Um, I like judging coaches like we judge players. It's like you have to elevate your game because we're going to elevate this roster. And if you're not meeting up to the level of the roster as it's constituted, then you either are going to get a short leash or you're just going to be gone. And that's the thing that I'm, I'm worried about with this particular team is do we see like players like developing a whole lot under Billy or is it because we have players who are just better who are making the team better. Like it, like I, that's what I'm starting to wonder, like what type of influence is he having over this team? Because we do see them performing better, but is that just because we got better players now? So like the book is kind of out on that. Just based off of what we see of him on the sidelines, I don't, I don't see, I, I don't know if I can give that much credit to Billy for any of the player development just based off of what we see on the sidelines and based off of like the, the post-game pressures and such. But. Absolutely not. There's no player development. 
because of Billy. We got two former All Stars in Drummond and Dragic to help make this team better. Io got a year of experience in. Pat doesn't look like he's progressed much from what he started as. Kobe isn't used right. No player development from Billy. And it the thing is, all the players love him because he's a player's coach. Mm-hmm. Zach had a different coach like every year in the league until he got to Billy. And he's been the only coach that he's had for more than one year. So Zach loves him. He just paid Zach the mask. So you want to keep Zach happy. Which is why Billy probably <laughs> makes it through the end of his deal. Should he? Probably not. I mean, he, he, he was great at college level basketball. Mm -hmm. this is the nba he was with the thunder he had kevin durant and westbrook before westbrook all he did was put up bricks they blew a 3-1 lead to the warriors and then kd went to the warriors and if you remember kevin durant tweeted out and forgot he was on his actual account instead of his burner and said that he did not like playing for Billy Donovan, which is one of the reasons he left. Probably didn't like playing for him because he wasn't drawing up plays and they blew a 3-1 lead. (laughs) Because Billy made no adjustments. Being likable is not... Being likable is not going to get you a better team. Not going to get you. Not going to get your team developed. Being nice and being likable. And I, I remember watching one of the pressers um, that Zach did talking about Billy and his reason for liking him so much was because he was he got really personal with him and treated him like a a human versus just a player, which is amazing. That's great. But like, I want to hear more about like how he's helped your game. How has he stepped up? How how has he stepped your game up? What opportunities has he shown you that you can improve upon and how has he utilized those strengths in the game and um, I haven't heard anybody on the team speak of that unless I've missed something but um, the positive feedback that I've heard from any of the pressers were just those kind of same sentiments about him being like a good a good person which is great (laughs) yeah uh it's always oh he took Pat to a playoff game or he went in to where wherever the player was at to visit them when they Mm -hmm. got signed to the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. That's not going to win games, unfortunately. Like going going back to Tibbs, all of them say Tibbs got on their nerves at times, but everybody says they love Tibbs. Mm -hmm. The thing is, he got on John Paxson's nerves in – he didn't like tips. <laughs> well, that's the key point that you said there, uh, Derek. There's a difference between liking and loving. Like, you might be like, oh, you know, the players like him. He's a player's coach. I don't want the players to like him. I want the players to love them. Like, when I'm, I'll give you, like, an example. Just from, like, my own personal experience, when I'm talking to my students, I've told you this before, Derek. I tell them, like, I am not going to like you. I don't like any of my students. And they look at me shocked, like, what do you, what? I say, it's not my job to like you. I am going to love you. That's how I can only approach this job to be real with you and have those talks with you when you're going wrong. I'm going to praise you when you're going right. But when you're going wrong, we need to have those real, like, come to Jesus talks. Like you, like you need to get your act together. And it's funny because I'm very hard on my students, but when I go down the hallway, I like get all of these hugs from students and I can tell that they just loved being in the classroom because of the structure. I don't want the players to like playing for Billy. I want them to love playing for Billy because Billy puts them in the best opportunity as far as getting better as a player. And to Mel's point, I haven't heard anybody say, yeah, 
Billy Donovan did this for my career. Like we heard that from 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 Joe from when he, his playing days in you know in Florida. There's a that's a big difference playing in college basketball as opposed to the demands of what it takes to get the best out of your professional um, players. So that's the thing. Like I don't want any of them to love them or to like them. I want them to love playing for for them and be able to look back back and say, this guy did this for my career. There's plenty of coaches in the NBA who have those stories from other players. I have never heard any player, as you all have pointed out, say that about Billy Donovan. Like, nuts. So. Because it's not happening. He's not a developmental coach. He's not an X's and O's coach. He's just a, I'm going to make you feel like we have a great friendship. <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't see him on the roller coaster with, <laughs> with the rest of the team. Like, Come on, Pat, sit next to me. <laughs> Here's a piece of gum. Let's go on this roller coaster. Yeah, I think we're on the same page with this in terms of like leadership styles. It, I've been in a position of leadership too. It's not like, it's not about being like, being nope. breakable is not going to get you where you need to be. You need to be respected. And as Justin said, loved, but it's not, it's not about being likable. Being likable is not going to, not going to push you to the next level. I want to be held accountable. I want you to tell me where I am not doing well and, and push me when I need to be pushed. I don't want a yes man. And you did great when I really didn't do great. It's not going to, it's not going to help me. Like you look at those players, like for other coaches, like Spolstra. And Jimmy was ready to fight Spolstra, but they still have a healthy relationship where like Spolstra can go to him and be like, Hey, this is what you were doing wrong. And this is what we need you to do to get our team better and to get you better as a player. I'm sure that there have been those moments that players have had with um, with Pop, too. I know there's been moments like they've had with Tibbs. So, you know, I, the thing is, uh, I can't imagine anybody having, like, that type of confrontation, healthy confrontation, with a coach like Donovan. I. I can't imagine anybody doing that because they look at him probably as their, their like favorite uncle or something like that. But um, yeah, I just, a little bit of confrontation, a little bit of irritation is healthy in professional sports. Accountability. Yes. Accountability is so important, but I mean, that's, yeah, he doesn't, it doesn't even seem like he holds himself mm -hmm. accountable. So how is he going to, how is he going to hold his players accountable? Yeah, I don't know, but you know we got we have some fan questions that we can go to. Because uh, I'm done talking about Billy. <laughs> I don't want to talk about him anymore. <laughs> All right, Morris asked question for the host: Who is your all-time favorite Bulls bench player? Ooh. Hmm. I will say Tony Kukoc. I was going to say the same. Mill. Any reason why you say that? I have my reason, but what's your reason? Uh, he did it all. Yeah. Scoring, setting the table, called him the waiter. Yeah. Key part of a the second three peat. We won championships when he was like the main guy off the bench. So <laughs> easily, Tony Ku coach. Yeah, I was gonna say that too. Um, only because like when Ku coach came in, like he was highly touted, highly touted as this great player, and they gave him a lot of grief. <laughs> Uh, coming over from Europe, like just everybody, particularly Jordan and Pippen, you know, thinking that he was soft, that he wouldn't be able to perform. And it called for Tony to like 
mature and step up his game even more. He was already a great European player, but he turned into a fantastic NBA player. So, yeah, that that dude really grinded. I think I, I think that's like the common answer for most Bulls fans, especially all the stuff that uh, all the crap he was given coming into the league and all the stories we've heard about it. And he stayed tough. Um, and obviously he contributed everywhere. So I think I think I feel like that's a really common answer for almost all Bulls fans that, that have been fans since those days. I'm going to I'm going to go with the same. Otto asked, do you think they should send P. Will to the G League? No. no. <laughs> I, I don't think we need to elaborate on that one. Just no. <laughs> P. Will's way too talented for the G League. Yeah, Where's... he's only better oh, wait, just... against um, like top level NBA talent. Like you can't get better just going up against guys that you can dominate in the G League. You have to face that adversity. You have to be playing against, you know, the top level cream of the crop. Iron sharpens iron. So, no. Yeah, that's a definite no for me. We, I, I want him off the bench, but not to the G League. That's crazy. <laughs> Where's Jackie? Asks if we make trades in the season, do we trade for older, experienced guys or young talent with higher, riskier upsides? He's thinking. It's going to be hard to find a great trade without losing Ayo Drummond or Caruso, thinking that we'll be looking to deal Luch and Kobe. I think we'll be looking to deal Kobe. We're not getting rid of Vooch or Drummond yeah. or Caruso or Ayo. <laughs> um, as far as if it's older guys or younger, I don't know necessarily – what Kobe would fetch. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, if we were to make a trade, like I I honestly don't care about older or younger. It's just guys who know to be able to come in and play a role and um, be able to, you know, just fulfill that role right away. And with people who are like, let's get rid of Vooch or Drummond. Like, what other bigs out there are we going to get who can do what they are doing so far this season? Like, no, we're keeping those guys. Yeah, I feel the same, except Kobe. But in, and in terms of, like, <clears throat> young talent or vets, I don't care. I don't think it matters. I think we just need a shooter. Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What, whoever it is, a vet or young talent, as long as their strong suit is shooting our, our three point, how we're doing at the three is atrocious. That's what we need. Mother Luna asks, what do you think Billy needs to do to improve and get the team ready for the next game? Actually coach and start Javante. Yeah. I mean, he's not going to fire himself. Um, so I guess if we're going that way, yeah, just put Javante in the starting lineup to get some energy going. For me, it's the same, just accountability and show us some emotion, infuse some emotion into these games. Give us some energy. Show us that you're mad aside from the gum chewing. All right. And yeah, that was all of the fan questions. Um, we have you know, three games this week, uh, starting tomorrow with a game against the Charlotte Hornets. I'm sorry, we play the Brooklyn Nets. We play the Brooklyn Nets tomorrow. They need to win that game. Has Has Brooklyn won this year? Yeah, they have. They're one in five. <laughs> okay, yeah. They need, like, if you are trying to be considered, like, you know, a player moving forward, you need to beat a team that's one and five. You just do. Okay. I don't care who you have on your team. You need to beat the team that's one and five. <laughs> Sorry. Then we have the back to back, which is the Wednesday's game against the Charlotte Hornets. Um, quick shout out to 
the winner of our tour contest, LLJB3. Hey. You have won tickets to the Bulls versus the Hornets, two tickets in section 201, along with a parking pass. Um, he has claimed his ticket, so you know, we wish you much fun and hope you see a Bulls win. What was his, do we know what his quote was? His uh, favorite Stacy line? His favorite Stacy line was, let me step back and kiss myself. Good one. Oh yeah, I think he said he 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 says that when he streams, right? Yeah. And then the Bulls will wrap up with a game, I believe it's Saturday, it's Friday. Friday against the Boston Celtics again. What I do don't care if they the go Celtics one and three. <laughs> what did you say? I said I don't care if they go one and three. You got to beat the Nets. Like none of the Nets players want, then none of their top players want to be playing. Simmons, we don't know. Like he's acting like he doesn't want to be a basketball player. Kyrie is like being crazy, crazy Kyrie. And Durant is like, I'm just gonna go out there and score thirty, so nobody calls me out. So like that's their team right there. Like they should be able to go and get a win there. I think even against, I I think we have to be a little bit concerned about. Um, Boston. I hope they're not like going to let their guards down just because of the first game we played. Right. Um, Brooklyn plays tonight. So they're on a back to back. Um, Again, Simmons Simmons is out tonight. Are you serious? Knee injury. Simmons is out all. I mean, whatever. (laughs) Go beat them. Go one and three, but beat Brooklyn. Like, I don't care. Just beat Brooklyn. Can we do two and three at least? It would be one and two, or one and or two. two and one. It's like it's three games. Here we go. I don't care. That. Just beat Brooklyn. He's not a math teacher. Like you can, you can lose to Boston. No. That's fine because we, you know, we. I'm not saying to lose to Boston, but we did embarrass Boston because everybody was saying that they were going to come out with a win, and they had a 19 point lead and they lost it. Okay. Um. But beat Brooklyn. Beat them. Sorry. Beat Brooklyn. Beat Charlotte and beat Boston. I'm like, I'm not going to say, yo, it's okay if you lose to Boston. No, it's not. Yeah. I'm not saying I want it's okay. three wins. I want I'm three wins. Okay. <laughs> because this team is good enough to beat Brooklyn, who's one and five. Charlotte, who does not have LaMelo ball. Mm-hmm. And we've already shown we can beat Boston. Yeah. Beat them again. <laughs> Beat everybody. I'm not f- afraid of any team. Go out there, do what you're supposed to do. Tell Billy to actually coach. Win. It's that simple. Win. Three knows where we're at. <laughs> and I'm sure. I'll be on here mad again next week, but yeah, you will be because you're setting yourself up. Justin started off the day mad, but yeah, I did start off the day mad, and I'm still mad. Don't think that I didn't hear that little thing about being a math teacher. Like, I will fight you. <laughs> I will fight you. I will do it through this, do it. and we will do go it. at it. Don't just talk about it; be about it. Let's go. I am about it. Let's see. Yeah, you will see. Bulls do not make me upset again next week. <laughs> or Justin, apparently. <laughs> Throw some gum in your mouth. Go ahead and chew that aggressively. Just ask some for <laughs> ask Billy for some. Fake He's man. got a lifetime supply. <laughs> they deliver it to his house. Was that a shot at my breath? You can't smell my breath through here, okay? Well, you already told us you have a uh, funky armpits from one of those other episodes. <laughs> I said I had armpits that were crying i did not say that it was funky it's about the same thing <laughs> not necessarily yeah That's on that note <laughs> on Perfect. that note we will all see you guys next time <laughs> until then go bulls go bulls go bulls Where's your team? Then this game over the horn blows oh.